Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and this is a quick little look at something that, um, you know, we are, like I always say when we do things and when we explain things, we always, we, we often forget that, you know, not everybody is, uh, has equal knowledge of, of, you know, what all of this is all about. So uh, one of the things, and I've seen a few of you out there having difficulty understanding how to um, actually use a bias T of your um, SDR Play RSP device. And it's very important to understand that um, the SDR Play devices, most of them, except the original RSP1, it doesn't, I believe, have a bias T. But RSP1A, RSPDX, RSP2O, RSP2 Pro all have bias T capability. What's that? That means it can power your loop antenna, the MLA30, without having that little box. So you see on the left side of the screen next to the SDR Play here, this is the bias T box that comes with the MLA30 antenna. When you decide to use the bias T from your RSP device, this box is useless. You don't need this anymore at all. It has to be removed from your connections. This, you keep it somewhere in a drawer or whatever, not far, if you ever need it for another receiver that cannot power your antenna. But you don't need this box. And I think this is the major cause of error. People think that they can power from the RSPDX, so they keep the same type of connections through this box, activate by ST, and then they say, well, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work because that box is not needed. Remember, this is a bias T. When you power from the RSP, you're powering it with the bias T of this device. So you need one bias T, not two. You don't need this because this does it all. So it's very important to understand that. Um, and I think a lot of people that have tried powering their R uh, MLA30 loops using their RSP devices uh, keep this box in the circuit, which is totally unneeded. You remove this completely. In reality, the connection here that says to antenna, this is your MLA30 that comes in here. That is what is plugged here in the antenna input. Your MLA30 is directly connected to your RSP device. Directly. Nothing in between. So that wire, that long wire that comes from the MLA30, goes directly to the antenna input. Nothing else. No little white box, no nothing. It's direct. On the RSP1A, you have one antenna input. So there's no problem. You just turn on the bias T by clicking the little icon in SDR Uno. In a device like this one, the RSP DX, you got to be careful. Bias T is available on one connector, and it's the antenna B connector. And actually, they have made a big rectangle that associates bias T and antenna B within one big rectangle. It's two buttons, but you see that they're in one big rectangle that uh, makes them kind of associated together. It's kind of a hint to let you know that, well, bias T is on this input, not the other ones. So if you plug it on antenna A or C, bias T, when you activate, will do nothing because the bias T is not available on these connectors. It's available on antenna B only. So just be sure that you do it right. It's simple, but it might, what I think messes up a lot of people and is the fact that they kind of wonder how to plug this little white box when in reality, this is not needed at all for your MLA30 to be actually powered by the RSP DX or RSP device. Simply take that long, long, long wire that comes from your MLA30, plug it directly to the antenna input, and in SDR Uno, just click Bias T to enable the Bias T 
at the antenna connector. It will power the antenna and it will work magic. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and hope that it clears up a little bit of the misunderstandings of using the BIAS-T on the MLA-30 with an RSP device.